news of today's football and the big rugby league match, plus the rest of today's sport, is Rob Bonnet. Rob. Thanks, Matthew. Well, a first away win of the season in the Premiership for Tottenham has further relieved the pressure of manager George Graham. Sergio Rebgroff scored the game's only goal, drew 0 0 at Leeds, and Middlesbrough, who drew 1 all at Aston Villa. Bottom club Bradford lost 2 0 at Southampton. Chelsea's game with Manchester United, Arsenal versus Ipswich and Sunderland against Liverpool are featured on Match of the Day. Results coming up. Time to look away if you want to. In the first division, third place Blackburn were beaten 2-1 at Nottingham Forest who are closing in on the top six. Forest's second goal came from Christian Edwards. The weekend's big game, though, is tomorrow. SPL leaders Celtic versus Rangers live on BBC One in Scotland from 1 o'clock onwards. But sports scene tonight features Dunfermline versus Dundee United and Hibs against St Mirren. Look away time again if you don't want to know the results now. St Helens are through to the fifth round of Rugby League Silk Cut Challenge Cup after a 22 points to 8 victory over rivals Wigan. The reigning Super League and World Club champions are now odds on favourites to win the cup as well. Wants a quick play the ball. It was a bruising encounter and world champion St Helens opened the scoring. Captain Chris Joint broke for a weak tackle to put winger Anthony Sullivan over the line for the first try. And Joint was in the thick of it again five minutes later. He jinked his way through the Wigan defence and powered over for the 100th try of his remarkable career. Although reeling from the early onslaught, Wigan were far from overawed. And Adrian Lamb's high kick came down to earth into the hands of Gary Connolly. No one stood between him and the line. Gary Connolly in for the try. Wigan put on the pressure in the second half and a penalty drew them closer. But then some classy handling and Paul Newlove put Tim Yonkers over for a St Helens try and firmer favourites to take the cup. Adam Minot, BBC News. Rugby Union now and Leicester's domination of the Premiership continues. They're 10 points clear at the top after beating London Irish 28-9. Meanwhile, Northampton have moved up to third behind Wasps after thrashing bottom club Rotherham 42-0. England wing Ben Cohen scored two of their five tries. Paul Hunter is through to his B&H Masters snooker final at Wembley, his first one after a surprise win over former champion Stephen Hendry. He beat him by six frames to four and faces the winner of tonight's match between Fergal O'Brien and Dave Harold, which O'Brien leads by five frames to two. And the odds on first gold, uh, winning the Cheltenham Gold Cup, have lengthened after his second place at the Aon Chase at Newbury today. First gold was beaten in the run-in by Shotgun Willie and is now only the 72 joint favourite with Seymour Business for Cheltenham's big race. And that is the domestic sport for the time being, Matthew. Rob, thanks very much. Finally, Michel de Joyreau of France has won the Round the World Yacht Race, the Vendée Globe. He crossed the finish line at Les Arbres de Lens this evening. Britain's Ellen MacArthur is in second place, less than 300 miles behind. This is one happy man. After 93 days alone at sea, one can only imagine what this felt like as Michel Desjoyeaux, reunited with his family, came alongside at the end of the Vendée Globe. The skies lit up as he crossed the finishing line, the 24,000 mile journey in the world's most unforgiving seas was at an end. And who could deny him the adoration of the crowds? Certainly not Ellen MacArthur's team who were gracious in defeat. It's been quite exciting all the way in. So no jealousy at all? Not at all, not at all. I mean these people go through so much out there. Um, it's a hard tough race and a lot of things happen but ultimately you have to have a lot of respect for the people around you and the sea that you're sailing on. For Michel Desjoyeaux, his family and friends, the party has started. Most of the attention throughout this race has focused on Ellen MacArthur, but no one could deny that tonight belongs to Michel Desjoyeaux. John Sopel, BBC News, Sable de Londres. Well, that's it from us. Good night. Taking breakfast with Frost, head of the British Armed Forces, General Sir Charles Guthrie, and Education Secretary David Blunkett, tomorrow morning from 9, here on BBC One.
Good evening. Well, it's been turning milder across the whole of the United Kingdom today. If you needed evidence, here it is. Altnahara has risen by some 20 degrees during the last 24 hours. And that's all due to the presence of mild southwesterly winds. Admittedly, in the north, they're coloured green, so it is a bit cooler here than further south. But nonetheless, those temperatures really quite significantly rising. And we're going to stay with the milder as we head through the next few days. To the west of this weather front here and the south of it, that's where we've got the warmest air, and that stays with us as we head through into Monday. Eventually, though, that system will clear away and by then it will turn just a little bit cooler but still on the mild side. Now, that's causing problems, though, with the thaw of the snow and also we're going to see more rain coming in on those mild winds and that will lead probably some more localised flooding on Sunday and Monday across England and Wales. Tonight, then, a mild night. Temperatures no lower than about 2 degrees in Scotland. And then in tomorrow, we're going to find more cloud and rain coming in across Wales into the Midlands, northern England during the day, pushing up perhaps into Northern Ireland in the afternoon. The best of bright weather is going to be in Scotland on the eastern side. Out to the west, though, there will be some squally, perhaps even heavy and thundery showers. The temperatures tomorrow again on the high side 6 to 12 degrees. Into Monday we eventually lose the wet weather from the south and following that then it's back to dry and more subtle conditions both on Tuesday and also on Wednesday. That's all from me for now though. Bye bye. The explosion ripped through the area's main street. Not be dictated to by Shots are standing. I'm sending them through now. The local people call it Tumbula Yeya. It means the rain has come. What has happened is only now sinking in. A bullet has not only killed a man, but destroyed the hopes of thousands. Central England is counting the cost of the torrential rain. This was for News 24. Now for the rest of today's top news stories. BBC News, whenever and wherever you want it. Rome, AD 2001. It may not have been built in a day, but Liverpool are hoping they can conquer it in 90 minutes. Prepare to see red as Heskey and Gerrard attempt to dash the Serie A leader's hopes of conquering Europe. And that's a beautiful finish. Exclusive coverage from the Stadio Olimpico of Liverpool's fourth round UEFA Cup clash against Batistuta and the mighty AS Roma. Match of the day, Thursday from 5 to 8, live on BBC One. Steve Bruce and Frank Bruno are here on BBC. Welcome to Match of the Day. What a goal! What a goal! Good evening. In our two main games tonight, we've got four teams with one thing on their minds, the Champions League.